Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, we'll be seeing the different types of databases which are there in the GSM system. So some of these uh, models or some of the components we have already seen in the network nodes. Uh, but this video is just dedicated to the databases, which are the different databases in the GSM system. So uh, I have taken a few of the couple of databases which are most commonly used in the GSM system. So let's get started. So first of all, we have the home location register that is we have the HLR. So it's a database of a mobile station and it's administered by a specific network operator. So network operator like your Jio, your Vodafone, your Airtel, your AT&T, your IDEA and all. So uh, HLR is basically of that particular mobile uh, operator. Uh, next uh, HLR is a central database which stores permanent parameters some particular parameters that will be seeing what are those of users and its information about the current location where the current location of the user or uh, which is his hometown and from where he purchased the phones and all the relevant data. So uh, in a large GSM system, if you have, you can have n number of HLRs and so uh, each HLR will contain only one user's data. And so if the number of HLR grows in that particular GSM system, you have to increase your uh, GSM system in such a way that it can accommodate uh, all of the HLRs into it. And so uh, what this HLR basically has. So uh, when you go into the deep inside this HLR, it has got the user status. So user status is nothing but your uh, status like your WhatsApp status. Uh, how are you currently uh, feeling? And similarly, in case of uh, mobile network, uh, whether you're an active uh, mobile subscriber or whether it's a passive or your phone has been lost or stolen or dead, something like that. Uh, next, it has the TMSI, uh, that is Temporary Mobile Subscriber Identity. We'll be seeing what is TMSI here in this detail. And it has the address of the VLR, which corresponds to the user's current location, where the current location is there, uh, whether he's in his hometown or whether he's uh, roaming uh, somewhere outside from his uh, home place. So uh, it has got that all information. Next, we have the VLR. So uh, VLR is also a part of HLR. So just consider it as a different database. One is used for storing permanent data, other is used for storing the temporary data. So VLR basically has all the information regarding the initiation of mobile originated call. So whenever uh, it's been said that whenever you purchase a, a SIM card, a brand new SIM card, it's always been said that you have to call to a particular number like uh, 1900 or something like that. So uh, that all uh, initiations and handling is done by the VLR. So uh, now let's see uh, architecture or uh, the basic structure of how the HLR and VLR uh, basically works. And so uh, this is basically the service area where you would be getting a call or uh, you would be receiving or you would be making a conference call or conversation or it could be uh, a data transfer or a browsing or it could be receiving SMS or text messages. So basically there are two users in this, user one and user two. So primarily you have VLRs associated uh, in each of this service area. And so user one has a particular VLR and user two has a particular VLR. So basically the HLR, what it does is whenever user one has to make a call to user two, it will find in the relevant HLR where that particular user two resides and where its VLR basically is. So HLR finds the user two's VLR and thus it initiates the call. So all the uh, information regarding the call initiation is handled by the VLR, whereas the switching and all regarding the current location where the user is and all is managed by the HLR. Uh, well, that was the part of HLR in uh, database. Uh, next, we have the AUC that is authentication center. So it is a database which checks whether the user is able to make a call or not with the brand new SIM card being assigned. So it's simple when you buy a purchase a uh, new SIM card uh, into your uh, device, a brand uh, new device or a other device, old device. So whenever uh, in such a case, uh, it's being the mobile operator will always uh, will urge you to uh, make a call to a particular number or send some SMS. So it's basically related with this kind of uh, security check, whether it's being trusted or not, or uh, the, whether the call is coming from a trusted party or not. So uh, it basically checks the authentication of the communication being done. And then you have the EIR that is the equipment identity register. It is 
very important we have already seen in the network nodes but in this it has some more uh, parts or some more features or what it actually does so it basically contains the serial number uh, serial number you can find on your uh, mobile carton uh, when you always purchase a new phone at the back side you can find the IMEI number as well as the serial number so that serial number is stored inside this EIR it's a database of mobile phones and uh, that has been lost or stolen and which is being kept in the blacklist so whenever uh, in a case like if it is stolen uh, from uh, somebody or it's being uh, a stolen from the pocket or pickpocketed or something like that case happens so uh, what a user does is basically uh, he goes to the police station and makes a complaint and uh, thereby he gets a missing certificate so in that missing certificate all these details regarding the IMEI number the uh, TMSI uh, then this EIR then the serial number everything is being updated uh, into their cyber cell authority and they have a list which is called as a blacklist they have a whitelist and blacklist so blacklist contains all the phones which falls in this category that is lost or stolen phones so that equipment identity register uh, plays a very major role uh, if your phone is being lost or stolen so if uh, you could trace back your phone in that case it will be then released from this blacklist of this stolen phones uh, next we move on to the IMSI that is international mobile subscriber identity so uh, you can see the pictorial representation of how the IMSI looks like so it's a, a 15 digit uh, number basically it's a combination of different characters and numbers so it's less than or equal to 15 digits and so it has got three parts that is MCC mobile country code MNC mobile network code and then you have the MSIN so uh, this MNC and MSIN just comprises the NMSI and uh, this MCC is a three digit code which is used to uniquely identify a country or the domicile of the mobile subscriber from which country is being calling. Next we have the mobile network code. Mobile network code is uh, optional uh, whether it's uh, of a trusted party or something of operator specific it's there and it identifies the PLMN that is whether uh, which network operator is there uh, operating that particular service area or providing that service next we have the uh, MSIN that is your 10 digit mobile number which you have uh, so uh, maximum is 10 digit and so uh, anything beyond that 10 digit uh, will not be accepted as a uh, valid mobile number and it will get uh, rejected so uh, this IMSI looks something like this and it's a unique ID which is used to identify a mobile subscriber and it's used to get the mobile details and storing that details in HLR or you can either copy locally inside the VLR and so uh, primarily it's uh, focused on preventing the eavesdropping uh, which is done by tracking so uh, this part that is the eavesdropping uh, that the uh, message reading or the messages which is being uh, captured by setting a proxy in between and then capturing those and reading those messages are prevented by this IMSI so in case this IMSI is not available or uh, it's being uh, very uh, crucial for your system to have then you can have the TMSI that is the temporary mobile subscriber identity uh, which is a temporary ID set between the mobile and the network and it is an alternative for this IMSI and it can be also used for privacy now let's see how this works so uh, whenever uh, you have this TMSI it has a VLR that is the visitor location register and it randomly assigns this uh, TMSI and to each of this uh, mobile networks in that particular geographical area so whenever that uh, mobile phone gets switched on it will notify to the HLR that is home location register and thereby it updates the information at each and every second and so the ID number which is local to that particular area is updated whenever mobile a user moves from one particular geographical area to another geographical area so it's like moving from one base station to another base station or from one location to another location uh, home location to a new roaming location so this TMSI is updated very very frequently and making it difficult for the call to be traced in particular area so uh, this will be very difficult so whenever like in case of some terrorist activity or something like that uh, this happens 
uh, so it's being uh, very crucially monitored where that particular person is sitting and he's being tracking all the details so he always changes this location and uh, because of this uh, the TMS are being updated very frequently as and when the geographical location changes uh, its random number gets changed and so it's a, a very random number and thereby it gets updated very frequently uh, but it provides very high level security for the mobile subscribers uh, so uh, this feature is uh, not available for all the individuals or uh, for not all the mobile subscribers but then too it has a certain level of authority only to those officials uh, these details can be uh, made as confidential and so uh, it's not uh, being publicly exposed uh, because it's very crucial otherwise uh, anybody could track anybody's location and then uh, the crime rate can increase so well that was all regarding a uh, small uh, quick introduction regarding the databases which are used for gsm network so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you got educated by watching this video please do like share comment and if you are new to my channel please consider do subscribing thank you very much for watching this video